どうもアメジンです。Wow, it's been so long since I've uploaded a video to YouTube. Actually, I got really, really sick one week. I had to go to the hospital and get antibiotics. And that was, it was actually more like two weeks. And then after that, immediately I went to my hometown in Florida, met family and friends, and it was a really fun time. Now I'm back and I'm ready to upload more videos to YouTube. Um, today, we're back with another interviewing study abroad students. Well, former study abroad students.、Um, this girl that I went to Japan with, we went to the same university. She's from Germany. She has an awesome personality, but she is a little camera shy. So,、um, I sent her all the questions in a text file, and she just typed out her answers, which I will be reading to you very quickly. There are a lot of questions, and her answers can get kind of long, so I'm going to read kind of fast. If you want to adjust the speed, you can do that by clicking the gear at the bottom right of this video on YouTube. Without further ado, start! o Question one Did you enjoy living in Japan? What was your favorite area, restaurant, or thing? She says, I've been to Japan four times so far and I enjoyed every day. Two out of four stays were for a longer period of time、uh, one for nine months and the other for nearly one year. My favorite things are probably the ones I can't find or the ones that are just too expensive in Germany. I'm a heavy sushi lover, that's true, and I could never afford eating sushi nearly every week、uh, if it would cost as much. In Japan, as it did in my country. Eating out frequently is not something young people do a lot here in Germany, where she lives, but it's one of the things I enjoyed the most in Japan. I'm not exaggerating if I say that I bought sushi and edamame every time I was at the supermarket. I'm also a victim of cute package designs and cute fashion, and Japan has exactly that, or at least they have it way more than where I live. I'm gonna have to agree with all of those statements. Number two, are the people in Japan friendly? I haven't encountered a particularly unfriendly person in Japan. Usually everyone is really friendly to you, especially if they can see that you're a foreigner. Again, I'm gonna have to heavily agree with this one as well. Is it easy to make friends with Japanese people? How about other foreigners living in Japan? She says, I think this question is hard to answer because as you grow older, it gets harder to make friends, in my opinion. Even in my country, I only recently found two friends that I would consider close. I perceive myself as a person who can easily talk with everyone, but if a person doesn't show me that they're interested in a friendship, I usually won't invest time into it. That said, aside from other foreigners around me, I only had one or two close Japanese friends. You're basically living in this kind of bubble with all the other foreigners. You're all living in a foreign country, sharing new experiences, helping each other, and you may even have quite similar mindsets. Most of the time, the foreigners come to Japan alone, so of course, everyone is really open to making new friends. When it comes to Japanese people, all of them already have a set friend circle, and your best way to make friends is probably joining clubs or other activities at the school. I have to agree with this one as well. A lot of Japanese are really interested to get to know foreigners and their culture, but at least for me, the friendship always stayed at a quite shallow place. From my experience, it was always the easiest to become friends with Japanese who learned English and who were quite open. Number four, did you have problems getting around or looking for certain places? Not really, <laughs> she says. I always had everything organized and knew where to go.、Uh, this is true.、Um, my friend here <laughs> is very organized, almost to the point where it's like she's fulfilling this stereotype that Germans are always super organized. <laughs> Number five, could you work in Japan with a student visa? Did you work? Yes, I worked at my university and taught German. I just had to fill out a form when I got my visa saying that I want to work while I'm in Japan. But I also heard that you could get it at the airport when arriving in Japan.、Um, I think I also heard the same thing. Actually, I think when I went through、uh, immigration and customs after arriving in the Japanese airport, I was actually asked,、uh, Are you going to work part time or whatever? And I was like,、uh, Not really. So I didn't have to fill out that extra form. But yeah, my university, the university that we went to, did have a process, did have a form, and likely a university that you go to if you study abroad to Japan will have the same or similar、uh, thing. Number six, did you bring a lot of cash with you? Since I already knew that my bank card works in Japan before I went there, I didn't bring that much money. 
I will say though that、um, Japan, especially places、uh, outside of Tokyo and outside of big cities like Kyoto and Osaka,、um, they don't <laughs> really use credit cards as much or bank cards as much. So I would recommend if you go to Japan in places like these to bring a fair amount of cash on hand. Number seven, did you exchange money in Germany or after you got to Japan? I exchanged money at my bank in Germany. Simple. Number eight. Would you recommend people with less money to get a part-time job in Japan? Definitely. It's a great way to expand your language skills and will make you more confident. It seemed to me that the easiest job to get as a foreigner was at a konbini or a convenience store in English. Number nine. Is Japan a more expensive place to live than Germany? Yes. Japan is more expensive than Germany. Of course, it differs. In some fields,、um, for example, the amount of rent I paid in Japan was nothing compared to what I have to pay in Germany, where she's at. Then again, this is something that heavily depends on the region you're living in. That's so true. Of course, a really small room in a rural area is much cheaper than an apartment in Osaka or Tokyo. The thing that annoyed、uh, her the most、uh, was when the price、uh, was the high prices for、um, fruits and vegetables in Japan. In Germany, I would make myself a big bowl of salad at least once every week, but in Japan, I barely dared to buy that much.、Uh, going out, buying groceries, everything was just so expensive compared to where she lives in Germany. If in Germany I go out with friends for an evening with forty to fifty, I guess that's euros in my purse. That's more than enough, but going out in Japan with that amount, I would probably barely have any left when going home at the end of the day. Number ten, what is really cheap in Japan that's not cheap in Germany? As already mentioned, Japanese food is obviously way cheaper in Japan than in Germany, and also brand shoes are cheaper in Japan. Hmm, I didn't notice that. <laughs> Then again, I really didn't go shoe shopping that much in Japan. Hmm. Eleven, did you have a boyfriend before leaving for Japan? Yes, and I would like to emphasize that everything regarding this is my personal experience and doesn't stand for all Japanese men. Experiences like this are highly individual. She had a boyfriend. That this is true. She had a boyfriend before coming to Japan, and then she had a boyfriend in Japan, <laughs> and then she went back to Germany. Number twelve. How hard was it to maintain a long distance relationship? She says, "My boyfriend and I were really young, and it was his first long distance relationship." We were only physically together for a little over two months, so it was already off to a tough start. The biggest problem was him not communicating enough, at least from her point of view. Communication is the most important thing in every relationship, totally true, but even more so in a long-distance relationship. I gave him more than he gave back, so it was easy for the relationship to become unstable. In every long-distance relationship, it is important to have a set date. Of when you two can end the long distance in mind, for example, something like moving in together after uni. In general, long distance couples should honestly talk about what they wish for the future sooner than normal couples. Number thirteen. Do you think foreigners can make boyfriends or girlfriends、uh, easily in Japan? She didn't answer this one,、um, probably because it's a very complicated question. Number fourteen. Do you think that it's hard being in an interracial relationship? She says, "I wouldn't say an interracial relationship is harder, but an intercultural one is. You have to imagine that you are already facing normal relationship problems plus problems that come up because of cultural differences. Again, communication is key here. Before I got into a relationship with my Japanese boyfriend, we sat down together and talked about a lot of things and problems we might encounter if we got into a relationship. It's important to set a common ground for your relationship. If your opinions already differ at the topic of PDA and showing emotions, how do you think it will be later? She asks. <laughs> Very good analysis. Number fifteen. What's the hardest part about having a Japanese boyfriend? Again, it appears she did not want to answer this one, so we will go on. Number sixteen. Did you experience any culture shock after arriving in Japan your first time? No. Number seventeen. What was the hardest part to accept about Japanese culture or just Japan in general? Her response is、um, some people blindly obeying rules,、uh, saying this is how we've always done it, even though it's highly inefficient. Some problems are just being ignored just because. 
um, it's easier to live that way for some people. She also talks about peer pressure in Japanese society and the saying, I'm so jealous, I could never do that because I'm Japanese, but you're a foreigner, so it's okay. Being different is still really frowned upon sometimes. 18. What was the thing you disliked the most about being in Japan? Aside from what I just mentioned and not seeing my friends and family, the insects in Japan are way too big. <laughs> it's also impossible to find bigger shoe sizes in Japan. This is a very common problem for foreigners, the, the shoe sizes one, not the, the insects one. Although I will say the insects in Japan are kind of crazy. <laughs> 19. What was the thing you liked best about being in Japan? Japan is way safer than Germany, and it was always fascinating to see how much people trust in that safety, leaving shopping bags in their bike baskets, not locking their doors, etc. As a woman, I felt a lot safer walking the streets at night in Japan than I do in Germany. Number 20, if you could have one part of Japanese culture or society in Germany, what would it be? Decline to answer this one, we'll move on. 21, was it hard communicating with the Japanese while you were over there? She said, not really. Everyone always tried their best at communicating and were usually really patient. I will say this is especially true of most Japanese people. You might not see that a lot in America <laughs> with a lot of, I mean, a lot of people are not like this in America. 22, if you could do it all over again, what would you do differently about studying abroad in Japan? Her response was, at the moment, I couldn't say if I would do anything different. Good. 23. Do you recommend anyone with a chance to study abroad in Japan to do so? If they have an interest in Japanese and the culture, then yes. Going abroad in general is something that I think no one will regret, and I highly agree with that statement. 24. Do you think you changed in Japan? Did Japan change you in any way? I definitely got more independent and self-confident. I also think Japan made me calmer and complain less about things. Germans really complain about everything and anything every day. It's in our blood. <laughs> I also take more care of my looks now and have developed a bigger interest in fashion. This is actually very interesting. I can see how this would happen for her because in Japan, people are very conscious about appearance and what they wear and a lot of attention and detail goes into choosing an outfit just for the day for both men and women in Japan. It's kind of crazy. 25, if you could give advice to anyone struggling with culture or communication or relationships in Japan, what would it be? She says, this is hard to answer, but just try to go out of your comfort zones and try using Japanese as much as you can. A great support system will make your stay memorable. And I can't stress that enough either. Um, usually, fellow foreign study abroad, friends will be that support system for you. Other support systems could include your advisor or your professors, um, other people from your country who may not be students, but they may be professors or just people living in your area in Japan, stuff like that. 26, would you go back to Japan if you could? Yes. 27, would you recommend studying at a school in the countryside? What about the city? Why? which one is better for you. So far, I've only studied at schools in the countryside of Japan, so I can't really say anything about the benefits of studying in a bigger city. Living in the countryside gives you more opportunities to actively speak Japanese, since there will be less foreigners and less people who can speak English. It's also way cheaper. Number 28, what was the scariest thing you experienced while in Japan? I don't think I really experienced anything really scary in Japan. But what came to my mind first uh, reading this question was the time when two Japanese guys kind of followed me and my friends uh, when we went home at night catcalling us. Thankfully, they went a different way after some time. And the last question, number 29, what advice do you have for anyone who wants to come to Japan? She says, stay true to yourself, but also be aware that you're living in a foreign country and the mindset of the people there might highly differ from yours, so respect that. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this Q&A uh, style interview, I guess, with my um, friend from Germany who I studied with in Japan. A lot of her points, pretty much all of them, actually, I agree, agree with, uh, highly agree with. She makes some very excellent points. 
I hope you guys learned a lot. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comments section. And also, if you have ideas for future videos or things that you want me to talk about regarding Japan, please, please, please let me know. Write them in the comments section below and I'll try to make a video on whatever y'all suggest. Otherwise, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Peace, guys.